welcome to my channel Commerce Specialist where you'll find videos covering various academic qualifications and professional certifications including life-changing business concepts and ideas. Guys, first of all, I would like to apologize for uh, uploading a video after a long time. I've been uh, busy traveling and with some professional commitments. Uh, I would also like to thank all my subscribers for the tremendous love and support they have given me. I really appreciate that and that's what keeps me going. So guys, today what we're going to uh, uh, talk about is uh, your focus. If you are an entrepreneur, if you are working somewhere in a decision-making role, if you're a student, what should be your focus? Especially if you're a student, this topic which we're going to cover today is repeatedly given in your ACC and CMA exams. If you are an entrepreneur or if you are working in a company, this topic is so very important for you because it sets the direction for you. In which direction you need to focus. What is it that really matters? So let's begin with the discussion. Assuming uh, there is a product which sells in the market for $100. So we are talking about the selling price. All right, the product sells in the market for $100. If you are a public limited company, even if you are a sole trader, if you are the owner of a business, you have certain expectations from the business. So if your product is selling in the market for $100, let's say you demand and you expect 20% return. So that is $20. So the product sells in the market for $100. The owner's expectation is $20 out of it as profit, which means the cost of the product, the cost price should be $80, 100 minus 20. So see what is happening now. The product which you're manage, uh, manufacturing sells in the market for 100. Out of 100, if you take out the owner's expected return, which is $20, what you're left with? You're left with the target cost. Which means you have to direct all your efforts to ensure that your cost of manufacturing one unit is $80. If not, this matrix doesn't follow them. This doesn't uh, you know, work the way we want it. And ladies and gentlemen, most of the time what happens? The product sells in the market for $100. Obviously, on the market price, you don't have any control. The market price is determined by demand and supply forces. Especially if you're operating in a competitive environment, there's perfect competition in the market. You just can't touch the market price. All right. Can you convince the shareholders? Next to impossible. I've been into so many board meetings. I've interacted with especially majority shareholders, nominated directors. I mean they have all the rights to expect from their investment. So if they are invested in the company, they read some returns and they have all the rights to expect as much return as they want. Now what? The ball is in your court. If you being in the management, the board of directors, especially if I'm the finance director or CFO, I need to ensure is my cost per unit coming to 80? Because only if it comes to 80, these dreams can be fulfilled, especially the uh, returns for the shareholders because oh, market price you don't have any control on. What if this happens? Your product sells in the market for 100. Obviously, 20% is the return for the you know shareholders and your cost comes to 90. At the moment, your target cost is not 80, but it's coming to 90. Your actual cost is 90. Big problem. Why? Because your actual cost is coming $90. It should have been 80, which means there is a target cost gap. Your actual cost is $10 higher than your target cost. Now what to do? This is where management accountants come into the scene. So if you are an expert, you should be knowing how to reduce the target cost gap, how to control the cost, how to reduce this $90 to $80, how to reduce $10 per unit, how to reduce cost by $10 per unit. 
So I'm giving you not all of them, some of the important tips. When you face a situation like this, when your actual cost is way beyond your target cost, how to control that, how to narrow the target cost gap. So guys, here are some suggestions. So guys, if you look at uh, bridging up the target cost gap to narrow the target cost gap to reduce the cost, the very first thing we need to look at is reducing the number of components, parts used in the main product. Let's assume we are talking about a simple cell phone. You know, there's a huge market for people who only need a simple cell phone, not very fancy, not very high tech. So if that is the market which you're catering, that's your target market. No need of putting, you know, high quality cameras, this and that features, because the more you try to put in features, the cost will go up and your target market doesn't require that. So please ensure, do the value analysis, see what is it that your customer wants only put those features in your product because the higher the features higher the number of component the cost is going to go up and we don't want to add features and components in the product which is not required by our market our customers the next thing you need to look at is reducing the labor cost it's not that firing people no what we are looking at is giving them appropriate training so the HR has to do the job. There is something known as TNA, training need analysis. Make sure what is it that they are lacking in. If you give them proper training, they'll be more efficient, they'll be more productive, and as a result, they'll reduce your labor cost. Looking at this learning curve, as I said, HR has to do the job. You have to put the right person in the right place, the specialist, division of work. Division of labor, uh, the same person is doing work again and again, he saves time. There is something known as learning curve. Learning curve is when you do things over and over again, you take comparatively less time to do the job as you took before. So less labor cost, less labor time, less labor hours, less labor cost. And then something which doesn't cost at all is motivation. What does it cost you to be polite with your workforce? What does it cost you to be appreciative? Acknowledge their hard work. Give them a pat on the back. This doesn't cost you anything, but that improves the motivation many folds. So if the worker is motivated, they are efficient, they are productive, and obviously down the road, it boils to the common denominator. It reduces your cost. Next thing we need to look at is standardization. Now standard costing is again a very, very important phenomena in a, uh, modern manufacturing company the top management needs to set a standard for example if you're making one unit and four kilograms should be used that's the standard you don't leave your workers to decide how much of raw material they should be putting in if that's the case if four kilograms is required somebody will be using 5.5 somebody will be using 3.75 the management has to take the lead decide what's the standard quantity exact quantity to be used to make every unit so once standardization is in place, you are using four kilograms per unit, come what may, which means there will be less wastage. Nobody will use more than required quantity of inputs and resources to manufacture the product. The next important thing is acquiring efficient technology. We all need to invest in technology, get better equipments, better machines. They are faster, they are efficient, they save time. Obviously they save money. One of the important thing is, when we talk about efficient technology, we're talking about less inputs. You know, there are machines which works on AI now, artificial intelligence. So, you don't have to tell the machine every time what to do. Otherwise, you need a worker to supervise that. So, down the road, it cuts your labor cost. Next thing, non-value active activities. You have to eliminate them. As I said, you have to look at the activities. It's not that you've been doing a business in a particular way for the last 10 years, you continue doing it now. What if you had 10 different activities, 10 different processes? Process one, two, three, four, five, and after the 10th process, the product is finished. Nobody's telling you to follow the same process. What I'm asking is, are those 10 processes still valid? Do we still need them? Because please keep this in mind, the more activities, the more cost. 
most of the activities are cost driving activities so we have to analyze the activities the current processes do we still need them can we improvise if we can we can eliminate activities which are no longer required so if you are able to do that less activities means less cost finally we are talking about using substitute materials so management has to be very very careful here they have to look at possibilities can we use a substitute material which is good in quality and cost efficient the best example i can give you is about aircrafts decades back most of the components of aircraft especially the body was made up of steel iron yes very strong but expensive too but these days we are talking about fiber lighter and cost efficient so think about it whichever environment you are in whatever product you are manufacturing do you have a substitute product do you have a substitute supplier somewhere you can source the product at a way lower cost or product x can be used in substitute of product y which is of the same quality it gives the same result but it is way cheaper so ladies and gentlemen these were some of the tips and techniques you can use to bridge that target cost gap guys one thing you need to keep in mind that most of the cost of the product or service can be controlled at the design and development stage that is the stage where you decide what to make how to make how much to make for whom to make what proce uh, procedures to follow what activity we need what components to add what features to add all that keeping your customer and user in mind it's not what we want it's what they want number 1 number 2 you can only be successful in market either you are the pioneer or you are the innovator you have monopoly but 90% of the businesses are not pioneers they don't have monopoly they 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 are uh, operating in a competitive environment there's perfect competition which means you cannot mess up with the selling price it's decided by the market forces you cannot force and you cannot it's it's next to impossible to influence the investors because they have all the right they are investing this is the roi they need so they have some expectation and you got to respect that so the only thing left is the cost there are companies who are focusing on how to adjust price can we increase price to improve profitability that's the biggest mistake if you are working in a competitive environment so uh, trying to reduce this trying to adjust this is like banging your head against the wall you won't get anything out of it so the only thing we need to focus is how to control this cost how to you know reduce your actual cost and get it to your target cost ladies and gentlemen i hope uh, you have understood this concept if you have any queries question please leave a comment below i will respond to that guys if you like this video please share it with your friend and family members so that others can benefit thank you so very much for your precious time <music>